everybody to another episode of the Brett Allen Show, a pop culture podcast where we talk to your favorite actors from film and television, music, comedy and more. And today I'm excited. Well, I say this all the time, but I really am excited about our conversation today. We're talking to actor Matthew Del Negro, and a lot of people would probably recognize you from the West Wing scandal. I mean, you've just been a part of so many big projects, City on a Hill currently. But what got my attention the most out of everything that you've done is you have this podcast or this, um, I don't even know how to describe it. It's called 10,000 No's. And essentially what Matthew is doing, um, I say this jokingly, he's helping actors. He's telling people where the bodies are buried pretty much uh, in the industry as far as like his experiences being on a show like Scandal that seemed like it was going to last forever. And then all of a sudden, as you said in, in your explanation, your storyline kind of just disappeared instantly. But you've done Instagram lives and other things that I've participated in where you invite your managers, you've had publicists on, and you're helping young actors and anybody really kind of navigate the business. Would that be a pretty safe assumption? Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised you didn't mention Sopranos since you're talking about where the bodies are. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. I mean, that's the thing. You've just done so much. It's it's you know, when I talk to actors who have had such a massive body of work, sometimes it's hard to keep up no, no, because I'm kidding, of what you've the... done. But it's you know, it's true. And this is very fascinating, Matthew, because, again, you know, there are classes out there that people can take that sort of help you learn to audition or sort of kind of help you. But your business is a mysterious uh, individual, I think, because, you know, once you get in it, you kind of know how it works, but not a lot of people tell you how to get into it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind of, you know, the way the whole thing started. It's funny, like the podcast I started in 2017, but the, the title, uh, 10,000 No's, came from kind of a joke throwaway conversation. Uh, my buddy who I had done a play with in New York, we had both moved out to LA. His parents were visiting from Philadelphia and his dad, this is probably like 2012 or 2013, I think. And his dad said, how's it going? I said, you know, it's good. It's up and down, whatever. I said, I get asked to go speak to these um, masters of fine arts programs in in LA, these kids that are not not always kids, adults too, but people that are just finishing a master's program and they're about to go into kind of the real world of acting and be, you know, working actors. So they pull me in to talk to them. And I, and I told them, I just, I started to say, basically I'm told no for a living. And that was my, you know, saying to them, like, you're going to get out of school and it's this great cocoon where you're you know, working on plays and you have like a troop of actors and you've got these great teachers, but you're going to get out and you're going to go hustle for jobs and you're going to be told no all the time. And I was saying, you know, at this point I had done a lot of stuff and I was like, still present day, you just told no all the time. So my buddy's dad said, how many no's have you heard? And I was being, you know, I was just kind of joking around. I had just read outliers uh the malcolm gladwell book and he talks about ten thousand hours and that whole theory and i was like oh and i kind of did the math i was like you know five days in a work week 52 weeks in a year i've been doing this for a long time i was like i don't know ten thousand no's and and we laughed and i was like oh that'll be my bio someday the ten thousand no's the matthew <laughs> del negro story and then i ended up doing the podcast and that led to a book deal and that title is ten thousand no's and um and so I didn't really plan it that way, but it's it's almost like by default I became an expert in rejection and dealing with rejection and uncertainty and overcoming it. And um, you know, the book has a lot of uh, stories from my sports background, um, and I realized like a lot of my mentality toward my business comes from an athletic background. I. I you know, played sports growing up. I played lacrosse in college. I kind of, I didn't think I was a great, great athlete, but I was pretty good at like hustling. I had a pretty good attitude, was willing to learn, didn't have a big ego about it. And I got probably further than I should have. And so I've just kind of like taken that mindset and applied it to my business, which is, you know, brutal, just, just brutal. And, and just basically wanted to create something that, 
you know, I was probably mid forties when I created it. And it was basically like, what would my 22 year old self have loved back then and could have really used. And it was like, what about a guy who's done, you know, been on a bunch of sets, been on some pretty cool shows, all of that stuff and is, you know, giving me access to him. So that's, you know, it's evolved to that. Originally it was just interviews with cool people in different fields, all about how they overcame their rejection and got to where they're going. And then it's now in the recent year or two, also I have this aspect that's a the 10,000 knows insiders community because yeah. I don't know how much you listen to that or know about that. Quite but- a bit, actually. I find it very fascinating, especially as someone who interviews actors all the time for a job. It's the world that you're in is not common to most people that work a nine to five. We watch you on television. You're on a series like West Wing, City on a Hill. Scandal, I use that as an example because you talk about that a lot. You're on that show for a very long time. And then all of a sudden, Matt's character is gone. And it's like, there's an assumption that people have that when you're on a show like that and you have a big series arc, that you're making millions of dollars and that everything is just hunky dory. Uh, but really like th- th- again, not so much the truth. And I've, I've, that's the one thing I've learned from this podcast is what you see on television is not necessarily even like some of these big shows, like, I don't know, this is us. I've talked to several people from there. Nothing is a guarantee in this business, no matter where you're at, even maybe like a Brad Pitt or a Tom Cruise. I don't know. I've never interviewed them, but I'm just assuming, you know, maybe, I don't know, they might not struggle internally, but yeah, you're, you're, I think you're it's doing a different, is yeah, no, no, I think it's like a, there are different versions of the same problem, yes. you know, cause I've had, I've had Kevin Bacon on my podcast and Henry Winkler, and these guys are icons and you talk to them, it's a different version, but both of them, they, it's like, it's so ingrained when you're young that you're, there's this feeling of I'm not enough. I'm not enough. You, everybody feels like they're on the outside. Even those guys felt like they were on the outside. So, you know, anyone you talk to, um, they maybe uh, financially they're okay, but maybe not, you know, look at MC hammer. It's like, he was making what $30 <laughs> million dollars in a year and spent it all. So it's like, you, you know, you would, you would think that it, it's, It's really, it's not even, it's, it's that feeling of like, you know, that yeah, anything could go away at any point. So how do you work hard and kind of have these routines and these, and not even just for the work, but for your sanity, because it's, it's, you know, it's different from most careers where I think a lot of people are looking forward to the weekend and looking forward to retirement and actors really do love the work for yeah. the most part. Um, you know, there's exceptions and there's sometimes when you're on something that you're not crazy about, but you really, the hard part of being an actor is generally not the actual time on set. The hard part is putting yourself in a position to be hired, to be, you know, looking for work is, is kind of harder work in my opinion than the work. Now the actual work is hard as well, but it's, it's it's different. It's the the psychological toll of being out of work and looking for it is what I kind of deal with um, in the insiders group, you know, because basically I would have these these cool interviews with not only people like Bacon and Winkler, but then entrepreneurs or pro athletes or crash survivors and people would listen to them and they'd say, I love this interview, blah, blah, blah. They'd email or or direct message. But, you know, I'm having this problem with blah, 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 whatever it was in, in their career or their life and wanting to help people and being flattered that they're listening, I'd email them back and I, you know, kind of get involved and almost like this email coaching kind of situation, not, not like investing tons of time into it, but trying to help at a certain point, I was like, all right, I just don't have enough time in the day to do this. Obviously there's a need here that's you know, people have a need for this. Why don't I just like build something, create something that serves that need and is still affordable for the people that actually need it? Because that's the problem. It's like you have 
most of the people that need this, well, there's also people that are pretty far along that could use it. But a lot of the people are in the early parts of their career. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you, the, the budget to, to do it. So I've made it where it's like, it's a, it's something that can grow. There can be more and more people in it and it still stays intimate. And it's also not going to like, you know, break anybody's bank in the current form, the way it is right now. It's, you know, it's, and they get access to me every week and then to, um, you know, some VIP guest every month, whether that, you know. Yeah. That's the thing that I find extremely fascinating about all of it. And I imagine when you're on a set for the first time, maybe it's, you know, something independent from the work that you've done, or maybe when you show up on these other big shows, you might have young actors. I know I did some stand-in work and some extra work back in the day when I was living in New Mexico. And I remember just watching these people work. Um, and, uh, you know, there's the temptation as an extra, which you're not really supposed to do to go up to somebody like a Mary McCormick or, you know, somebody of that stature and say, hey, how did you get into the business? Because it really disrupts the chemistry on the set, especially if they're an actor who does the method thing and they're always, you know, in that mindset. And that's actually a list of rules they give you before you show up on set. Don't bug the actors <laughs> on the set, but yeah. they get access to you who's done it and been in the trenches, as I said before. And you have this library of, of programming that people can access actors and i think it's really good for just anybody who wants to break into anything really because you know you've done it for so long and they can maybe hey go to episode 45 and listen to me where i talk to kevin bacon about you know this or that you know and yeah. then it just saves you a lot of time from having to maybe answer you know that's DMs exactly. or exactly that's that's what that's what basically it's like i systemized it in yeah. a way but still giving live access but but basically yeah you, you know you're right that it's not really just actors the the majority of the group is actors filmmakers writers um but i have you know i have someone in the group who and she loves it and she's like uh uh, she was a very high executive at Nike and she's now written a book. And she came to me through someone that I knew who coached my, my daughter um, in volleyball, who was like a motivational speaker. Who's like, you know, th these are, when she joined the group, I was like, I don't, you know, I don't know what you're going to think of this. She loves it because what you said is right. It It's not just, you, you know, acting could be the backdrop for many of the people but really it's about mindset dealing with uncertainty you yeah. know and, and and when the book came out the timing couldn't have been better just because we it's like i wrote the book and then as we were in the editing stages COVID happened and we all got i was on city on a hill we got sent home so i was home for like eight months and i said to my wife i said this is this is crazy. It's like, this is a lot of my life is like this. Anyway, I'm in between work. I have to kind of occupy myself. <laughs> I have the podcast. I have things that I've created. And it's like now, like the, the world has been brought to my level of uncertainty because that's what it is for an actor. You kind of don't know unless you are the Brad Pitts or the Tom Cruises who has projects lined up for years. You don't know what's next a lot of the time. So you're always just going, I... I, I, it's very uncertain. And so that's what I've become, you know, pretty good at dealing with just psychologically. And even, even saying that it's not like, I don't have my days where I'm like, Oh, I mean, that's, that's, I, I say to everybody in the group, I'm like, guys, I'm, you know, I'm here, I'm getting as much out of this as you are. For me, it holds me accountable because when I'm having a down week, I know I've got to go talk to this group and kind of have a little bit of a, you know, I can't just be, you know, go in there like I'm a total downer. It's like, okay, where, yeah, how do we find the like, silver lining? <laughs> yeah. What yeah. Is it's this? like, how do I, yeah, it forces me to walk the walk because sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it is just brutal. And then other times, you know, right now I'm working. This is great. I'm, I'm on a show. It's a good show. It's a good people. It's like, it's, it's really great. You know, you don't know. Hopefully this, this thing could go 
you know, seven more seasons or it could be this could be the last season. I don't know. It, there's so many factors um, that are beyond your control. And all I could control is how I prepare, how I perform. You know, I know that my collaborators are good, so they're going to make it look good. But who knows? Is the audience going to connect? Sometimes I do. I've done stuff that I didn't think was great and it went. I done stuff that I thought was incredible. It didn't go. So who knows? You know? Yeah. I have a couple more questions here. I know we have uh, a hard stop. I want to ask on the other side of this, because you're repped by two pretty well-known agencies in the business. Um, when you come to them and say, hey, I'm starting this thing uh, <laughs> and I would love to talk to you about your side of it. What is the response from, especially your management company? They represent some of the biggest names in the business along with yourself. Like what is their, you know, what do they say when you come to them and go, I have this idea and I want you to talk about the other side of the business, getting rep. Do I need a manager? Do I need an agent? Those are the lot of the biggest questions that really stump people, I think, when they start. And then they wind up spending a lot of money unnecessarily when they probably could do it themselves. Did they respond positively or what are they They're like? This is the great idea. Yeah, I mean, look, they, this is, you know, part of the lessons that I'm always telling is like relationships and like how you conduct yourself day in, day out is setting you up for the long haul. So luckily with my agent and my manager, I have great relationships. I've been with them for a long time. And it's not like I just started this and said, hey, can you help me? I've yeah. been doing, you know, this is now 2021. I started it as a podcast. I didn't even really involve them in the beginning. And then I got the book deal that, that came out of the podcast. And I was thinking I wasn't even going to involve them with that because I'm thinking, oh, these are two very separate issues in my life. And one of my friends who's in the television business was like, no, you have to get your reps involved because th he's like, this is all part of it. I really wasn't even thinking that way. And I went to them. We, we actually had a meeting. We went somewhere and met with this guy who was kind of um, advising me business wise. And they came and I said, yeah, I don't want to, you know, you guys are out there hustling to get me auditions and I don't want to like, you know, put this on your plate. It feels like something in over in a different area. And they said, no, this is the fact that you've got this podcast and you talk with all these people that you do. The fact that you've got a book deal, they're like, this is when we're pitching to get you in a room and somebody doesn't know you, that the fact that you wrote a book, a lot of people have not written a book. They're like, that's something that makes you more interesting that helps get you in the yeah. room. We want to know all of this stuff. So they gradually got more involved with all the podcast and book stuff, but not, I've never really leaned on them too much with it. It's kind of been my own little side hustle. And then now when it turned into this insiders community, I started bringing in at first friends that were, you know, regulars on the shows that I was on or, okay. or, or actors that were, that created their own content. Cause I talk a lot about that in the group um, and just people that would inspire them. And then recently just thought, well, these guys could really use a talk from hear it right from the agent. Don't, don't listen. Don't take my word for it. Take it from Marion, my agent or, or Becca, my manager and, and Marion and Becca were, were so cool. They were like, yeah, we'd love to do it. Let's just work out the dates. They came in, they were awesome. Everybody loved them. And, and what we also realized was we would, you know, at one point, uh, Marion was talking about self tapes from an agent standpoint. Actually, I'm putting it out today as a, um, a mini Monday morsel, this little section where she talks about it, but you kind of get her perspective. And then I was like, well, hang on. I want to weigh in from the actor standpoint. Cause this is, and we had, we, we agreed on pretty much everything, but there's a slightly different take from the actor. So you're the members of the group are kind of getting you know, a mixture of both of those things. And, and we've, what we've done, we've gotten smarter business wise when we've gone, okay, this was just for the insiders before. Now we've said, okay, we advertise it and we go, if you're not in insiders, you could pay like, I think it's like 20 bucks or something like that. And, and just be on one of these calls with the VIPs. And if you like it, you want to sign up for insiders. Great. If you don't, you go away, that's it. And it's just like the more, the merrier. We may as well have a crowd when these great people are coming in. So 
Yeah, the reps were awesome about it. They they were so cool about coming in and helping, and and they they like it because they know it's helping people, and it benefits them too. I think probably on certain levels as well. I think everybody benefits. It's the whole concept of digging the well before you're thirsty. I think is really the big takeaway here: building relationships and taking this one step at a time. We've been chatting with Matthew Del Negro. I mean, sitting on a hill right now, and of course all the other amazing projects that you've been a part of. And we will link this and the book in our show notes so people can access this. I think really, if you're an actor and you're listening, great. But if you're just anybody, an overall content creator, or whatever the case might be, if anything that you're interested in, this will benefit you. Matthew, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. Yeah, Brett, thanks for having me. And thanks for being so, uh, it's, it's, it's really nice to hear someone that I didn't know beforehand is listening to this, has been listening to it and has moved enough to have me on and try to share it with their crowd. So I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, it's nice to chat with you.